Hey, what's up YouTube? Pirate King Codex here. Uh, it's been a little while since I've had a video. Sorry, I've been a little busy lately, but I did want to get some more videos out before uh, OPF 3 comes out. So going into set two, the deck I was most looking forward to was Whitebeard. So I've been uh, getting to it um, after some time. I've decided that I like the Boatbeard version better. Um, I think part of it is the stylistic part of it, but um, I think that it's just uh, a more fun deck to play as well as being really strong. So this is my take on it. So uh, to start out, we have the leader. Uh, we have Edward Newgate, uh, Whitebeard. Um, so he is a 6k leader, I'm sure uh, you know by now. And he has 6 life. At the end of your turn, add one card from the top of your life area to your hand. Uh, this is a mandatory effect, so you are going through your life every turn. It's, um, it's a design choice to kind of balance out the strength of the leader, uh, which kind of plays into its uh, favor a little bit because you get more cards in hand. Uh, that'll let you survive longer although it does sound kind of intuitive it does put you on the clock but it does um make the game go a little quicker and it does make you stronger by the end of the game uh next up we have otama it's a 2k um you know, it's one of the um, the most versatile ones to have um it's a it's only a one drop and you can give up to one of your opponent's characters minus 2000 power during the turn so it's good to also play in certain situations in order to get some KOs on some characters that are normally outside of your removal range. Uh, but it's also 2k counter, which is always good. Uh, so I've opted to go with Bartolomeo over something like Blenheim or Chopper. Um, it does have an ability where if you attach to Don on your opponent's turn, it gets plus 3,000 power. So you can use it to dodge uh, certain removal. So the Vista's no longer targeted, Robin doesn't target it, and um, uh, Newgate so don't target it as well. So if your opponent tries to swing in with um, an Edward Newgate uh, with the two Don attached to it, the character card, then um, it, it no longer gets KO'd by this. So for this reason, um, also having the, the 1k counter, I think this is um, the most uh, beneficial cheap blocker. And I do think you want to have um, this in addition to the Marco, which I'll go over uh, very shortly. But with the uh, with the, the blockers, you want to make sure that you have enough to protect your life. And sometimes it is good to just drop a cheap blocker and keep some Don open for some of the event cards. Next up we have Vista, which is one of the Whitebeard Pirates. It's a 3 drop for 3k. On play, K up to one of your opponent's characters with 3000 power or less. So this goes really well with the deck. It can help get rid of some of the cheap blockers that are in the way. Um, it can get rid of um, some characters that are searchers, so that way you don't have to spend um, a turn attacking it. And at the end of the game, it also becomes a 5k when you have the Moby Dick online, when the effect is active. And having it on play is a little bit better than the Robin because uh, you get the immediate effect and you don't have to worry about it being KO'd in between turns. Uh, Robin um, is reliable in certain ways, but Vista works well in this deck. And uh, there's, I, I think Vista's kind of taken over the Robin spot in a lot of decks, but depending on the deck, you know, you might play either or. But in this case here, Vista is the way to go. Uh, next up is Jozu, another white beard pirate card. Um, it's a 2k, so it's also going to be really good to have in that case. But uh, it could also end up being a game closer as well. So uh, if you have two or less life cards and your leader has white beard pirates in his type, which it does, this character gains rush. Uh, so you attach one Don, and then at the end of the game with the Moby deck, you attach the Don. Uh, you can easily swing in for, for pretty big numbers. Um, so in some cases here, um, it's going to be the same as playing an ace. So it's going to be one of the cards that you want to um, try to keep for a late game if possible um, as a, um, a way to try to close out the game, or you can use it as a 2k counter if needed. Uh, next up is Squard. Um, with Squard, uh, I, I would like to have more Squards in the deck, but I kind of feel like it gets a little clunky the way I'm building it. So I think two is a good number. I've tried going from zero to four. I've tried all different ranges of it. But I've decided to go with two for now, and uh, it has no counter, but it's a 5k body on play. If your leader has a white beard pirates type, give up to one of your opponent's characters minus 4,000 power during this turn, then add the top card of your life area to your hand. So at the end of the game, when you have no life cards left, this will become really powerful. You can get a body on the board that's going to be useful next turn. Uh, it doesn't take too much Don to play. Only three is pretty cheap. And then you can give minus 4,000 power, so you can... Um, 
it, it's a pretty my it's a pretty big subtraction for one of your opponent's cards so you can use it to get something that's normally out of your range for some of your ko or you can make something just easier to attack into so this square score is really good but if you have too many it's not really useful it's better later in the game so i have only two of it and there's certain situations where it's a dead card so it's good for um for pitching to the marco ability Next up is Marco, which is one of the best cards in the deck. It's going to be one of your main ways of surviving. So uh, Marco is a 5k and it's a 5k attack and 1k counter. It's a blocker. So it has an on KO. You may trash one card from your hand with wipe your pirates in its type. If you have two or less life cards, play this character card from your trash rested. So this is a very resilient blocker. It's one you can keep reusing as long as you have cards to pitch for it. So this is where like your Moby Dicks uh, will be useful because even if you have one on the board, you can pitch it for Marco. So it's an easy card to just pitch for that. Uh, if you have any other cards, like let's say if you have um, character cards that you're not going to be playing towards the end of the game, uh, you don't really have the down investment to play another character down, you can use the Marco to um, to pitch those cards and bring Marco back. If your opponent tries to remove it, you can uh, keep pitching cards for it. So you have to be careful not to go too crazy because your opponents will try to target down the Marcos because they are going to be in the way. So if your opponent does try to get rid of a Marco, uh, it is easier to swing into than Whitebeard. So you have to be careful about when you block with the Marco to try to make it as most efficient as possible. Uh, next up we have Atmos, uh, which is one of the key cards in the deck. So early on you want to make sure that you're playing a body as soon as possible. So usually on turn two, you want to try to get Atmos down if you have it. Um, just having a vanilla for 6k is really strong in this deck and at the end of the game it becomes an 8k when you have a Moby Dick online. So this is a card that's really good to have. It is susceptible to a lot of removal because it's only a 4 drop and it's a 6k so it's in jet pistol range. Um, so there's a lot of cards that can't remove it so you have to be careful about that. The King Dew is similar. Uh, it's a 5k for a 7k. So this is going to be a 9k at the end of the game when you have Moby Dick online. It's a little harder to remove because it's outside the jet pistol range and with, um, with it being a 5 drop, not as many cards can get rid of it. There are still plenty of cards in the format that do, um, but it's a little hard to get rid of than the Atmos. Next up, I'm running 4 aces. I feel like a lot of people undervalue the ace, or they did at one point. Um, I could see an argument for 3, but I feel like ace is just really important in the deck because uh, it's going to be one of your bombs at the end of the game. So it's a 7 drop for a 7,000. On play, give up to two of your opponent's characters minus 3,000 power during this turn. Then if your leader has uh, the Whitebeard Pirates in his type, this character gains Rush during this turn. So you do have a Rush character at, at 7k. At the end of the game, it's going to be a 9k. And on top of that, you, you get to give two characters minus 3. So if your opponent tapped out trying to swing down to your leader, you can use the Ace to uh, make two targets a lot easier to KO. This is where the Ace is really strong. So that we can help clear out the board and make it um, harder for your opponent to to fight back. And then if your opponent tries to swing into it, it's going to be harder to KO than the, um, than the new gate. It's going to be easier to defend the ace than the new gate. So this is where the ace is going to be really strong. And then of course we have Radical Beam. This is going to be one of your key ways of surviving. Uh, this and Guard Point. But uh, it's a counter card for one. Your leader or up to one of your characters gain plus 3,000 power during this turn. If you have two or less life cards, this card, um, that card gains an additional plus 3,000 power during the battle. And then on trigger, uh, your leader or up to one of your characters gains plus 1,000 power during this turn. Doesn't really get used for the trigger too often, but it is going to be one of your key event cards. So you want to see this as soon as possible. Uh, as many copies as you have is going to be helpful. Um, so this will bring your new gate up to can. Uh, this will bring your new gate up to 10,000 which is going to be uh, a lot harder for your opponent to get through. And then your opponent has to be careful if you have any open Don, they are going to be expecting these cards. So you have to make sure to account for that as well. You don't want to tap out when possible. We're going to leave some Don open so your opponent will at least think you have event cards. Um, but this is going to be your main way of surviving as well at the end of the game. And then we have Seaquake. Uh, it's only a one drop, but it's a cheap removal. If your leader has Whitebeard Pirates in his type, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with 3,000 power or less. So like I was talking about before, uh, this will work well with the Ace or the Squard. Um, or you can just get rid of some cheap blockers if they're in your way. You don't have to spend time attacking and uh, wasting an attack to get blocked. This will just clear out the, um, the field from the cheap blockers for you. Uh, the trigger gives up to one of your opponent's uh, leaders or characters minus 3,000 power during the turn. Be careful not to try to trigger it and expect to KO something. It's a different effect from the main effect, so just be aware of that. 
And then uh, next up, we have Guard Point. Your leader or one of your characters gains plus 3,000 power during the battle. Or on trigger, your leader or one of your characters gains plus 1,000 power during this turn. So that's something to be aware of. It could make it easier to defend uh, for the turn because that's an extra 1,000 power that your opponent has to try to get through. But for the most part, you're going to be using it for an event card. Uh, it's only um, one cost to use it. But uh, this is going to make it so uh, it's harder for your opponent to get through because uh, you have a lot of these cheap event cards to save your leader. Then next up, I have the Jet Pistol. I have uh, two copies of it. Uh, this is a card I really like. I feel like there's some threats in the format, particularly in green. Uh, there's the um, the Blocker Law. There's Okiku uh, against red. Um, you know, opposing Whitebeards. You know, they have their Atmos. They have Marcos uh, against black. Um, now they're playing Garp. Uh, a lot of the black cards don't have. Um, a lot of the black cards have protection against effects on. Um, on your turn, so you can't get rid of the Borsalino or um, Smoker, so you have to be um, careful about those things, but for the most part this is going to be a useful removal tool um, so this way you can um, help clear out some of those bigger threats that, um, again investing too much um, of your turn attacking into them, so this is where the Jet Pistol is very handy and then on trigger of course you get to activate the main effect and uh, this can also be a free uh, removal when your opponent attacks in, it can kind of throw them off guard and might even clear the way for your next turn. And then lastly, uh, the most important part of the deck is Moby Dick. It's the Whitebeard stage card. On your turn, if you have one or less life cards, you're Edward Newgate and all of your characters with Whitebeard Pirates in this type. Gain plus 2,000 power. On trigger, play this card. So this is uh, a card that I will mulligan for at the beginning of the game. I want to see it um, in my hand when I start the game, so I don't have to worry about trying to find it through my life. Um, this is going to be your main way of winning the game. In set 3, it is banned. Um, set 3 does gain a little bit more support for Whitebeard and it kind of just put it over the edge. But for set 2, um, it's legal to play and it's, you have to worry about being banned in set 2. Um, but it is going to be really strong because a lot of your characters are going to have the Whitebeard Pirates type, and, um, including your leader. Uh, so this will help make it so your attacks are bigger at the end of the game. So when you try to uh, swing in, you can close out games a lot easier. Uh, and your opponent won't be able to defend as much. Um, and then, as mentioned earlier, you can pitch it for Marco because you don't want to um, have more on the field. Uh, you want to save those um, in your hand. And um, the, the trigger is very relevant because if you don't have it in your opening hand, there is a possibility that your opponent can attack into your life and then activate the trigger. And then you can just play it for free. So that's also going to be very useful. Uh, just be aware that if you are taking life for your ability for the turn, that does not activate the trigger. So you can't activate Moby Dick if you draw it from your life. Uh, so just be aware of that. But in either case, you want to make sure that you do see it at some point throughout the game. Otherwise, your, um, your game's going to be an uphill battle. All right. So we're up against a Smoker. Uh, they're going second. Uh, we're going to mulligan this one here. Okay. So we do see the stage, which is good. Uh, we're going to just pass turn. Okay, so they do play the blocker here. So easy enough. Let's um, see Quake. Let's get rid of that. Swing in. Okay, so they counter early. And I'm just going to play Sage and pass turn. So they probably want to try to keep their life up so that way they can drop the. 10 drop Kuzan. It's going to make their um, gameplay a lot easier once they have that on the board. But let's see if we can try to get them down fast enough. Okay, he's just going to swing in. I'm just going to take this. He taps out. So um, that's that's good for me. Uh, I have 5 Don up, so I want to play King Do. Let's just swing in for 6. See if we can get another card out of his hand. Okay, so he takes that one. We'll play King Do and pass turn. That one's gonna be a little bit harder to remove than uh, the Atmos, uh, so it's a little bit better in this match. But um, Sakazuki uh, does come down, and that'll get rid of the um, the King Do. But he does have to trash another card here, and then I have another King Do as a backup, so I can just play that one. So not not too big of a deal, but you do want to have as many board. Uh, you you, def you definitely want to have as many characters stick on the board as possible. Um, so from here. Let's just swing in for seven, see if we can get another life here. All 
right. And we're going to play another King Do, and we're going to pass. So I also have an Ace in hand, which is good. Uh, that's going to help me uh, possibly get the, the game back in my favor. Now here, he's just going to swing for 6k, so I'm just going to counter out this one. It's going to be easier to counter than the Sakazuki. So we'll just do 1k. And I'm just going to take the next hit no matter what, because I'm going to end up losing out my turn anyway. So if he swings in with the Sakazuki, then um, I'm just going to, to take that. But now my my Sage has been uh, activated, so I'm going to get the plus 2k for my Whitebeard characters and my leader. Okay, so he doesn't swing on the Sakazuki, he's trying to uh, save that, so he plays a blocker instead. So that's going to help protect his, his Garp here. Um, so I still want to play the Ace. It's going to be easier to defend the Ace than it would be uh, my leader. So if I put something else to distract him on the board, um, then he'll, he'll probably focus on that. So let's see. Okay, so he lets it go. He keeps the blocker up. That's fine. Okay, he takes that. Okay, so I have two up. Uh, I do have two radical beams in hand. I have a few, um, few counter cards in hand. Not too many two Ks, unfortunately. Um, I like to keep a Jozu for, for rush if, um, yeah, if I can, but that's not always going to uh, be the case. Uh, he's getting back with cards in hand, um, so if I start playing blockers, um, it is going to be easier for him to remove. So the, the Barto is a little risky, but the, the Marco I can at least bring him back using the ability, but that's going to be resources and it means I'm out of a blocker. So let's see what my opponent decides to do here, and we'll end up drawing. If I get like another ace or something like that, that'll help turn the tide again. Alright, so let's see if it just plays like another Sakazuki. Oh, or a Kobe. Could play Kobe. Okay, there's Kobe. Okay, so he gets rid of the 10 drop, so he's not going to go that route. Alright, uh, I'm just going to drop the King Do. Uh, I'm not really going to get a chance to play it. Okay, so he's going with um, the Sakazuki. Uh, I am going to have to use one of my event cards here. Okay, so I also do see a Jet Pistol. Um, don't really have too many great targets on that. Uh, I would like to get rid of the Sakazuki, but he does have a blocker in the way. Um, so I could play the Vista. Get rid of his blocker. Uh, I'm gonna keep uh, five up for my cards here. Um, so let's swing nine into the Sakazuki. All right, let's let's go. Um, yep, ten actually. Yeah, I meant to go nine, but this will guarantee the kill at least. Nope, guess not. He went uh, he went all in on that. Okay. So then I will play my blocker and end turn. So now my opponent doesn't have any cards in hand. So if I can survive this turn, uh, it's going to be tricky. But if I can keep the Jozu, I could uh, go in for the game. Um, okay, so I'm going to use the Jozu here. I'm not going to need the Atmos at this point. Okay, so now if he does swing in with the Sakazuki, he can come in for 11. Which I would be able to counter out of. Yeah, so I'm going to... I 
don't want to use the blocker quite yet. So what I'll do is I will counter out of that and now I can bring back the Marco. Okay, so if I swing for a seven, um, let's see, because my opponent could have an impact wave or he could be um, just bluffing, but I do have to swing all out. This is my last turn here, so I have to go for it. Um, so in this case here, if I go, uh, if I can go nine, nine, yeah, I think I can go nine here. Okay, so now this should be enough to close out the game. All right, but yeah, I got pretty close towards the end there. Um, all right, he wants to do a rematch? Let's, let's do a rematch. Uh, this time I, I wanna go second. That works in my favor. Um, so I'm looking for Moby Dick. Uh, you can get off of life and you can play for free, but I'd rather have the um, the guarantee that's on the board because if it if it doesn't get played, it's going to make your gameplay a lot harder. So you're gonna be um, having an uphill battle the whole time. So um, I don't really have any plays here. I'm just gonna pass turn. Okay, so he's just going all in. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna trigger. Okay, I don't really have any good plays here either. So. Just gonna swing him for seven. He's gonna take it. And then I'm gonna leave the three open. Um, I don't really have any characters I wanna play right now. Don't wanna play the squad. Uh, it's gonna take a life. I'm just gonna kind of uh, put my opponent in a better position if I hear my life too fast. So I'm gonna lose my life pretty quickly as it is and then uh, the Barto would just um, be KO'd too easily here so um, he does play Garp so I have a Jet Pistol so I can get rid of that which would be good for me here um, so let's just swing in for seven he's gonna take that uh, Jet Pistol get rid of the Garp and then I'll leave one open Okay, so two two Marcos, so that's gonna be good. Um, I'm down to two life, so the Marco will be online. Um, let's just take this one. Okay, Atmos. Uh, I might play it so that way it's um, kind of bait. Okay, so we do have Sage here. Definitely gonna want that. Um, okay, so we have six Don, so we want to play the Marco and keep two open for event cards. So play one Marco and pass turn. Okay, got another Radical Beam. Okay, so my opponent will be able to play 10 drop Kuzan next turn. Okay, now he's getting the Garp engine online. So he's going to be going after this Marco pretty aggressively. Um, I think I'm just gonna use the Squard here. My opponent is going to likely just swing in again. I do have quite a few event cards, so I, I might be able to spare a few here. Uh, the mark is going to be really important because my opponents really have to get through that in order to close out the game. But if I can get Ace down next turn, uh, I can have a few open for event cards. I can maybe get rid of both of his um, character cards. And then he does still have to get through the Marco. And it's going to be hard for him to do. Uh, so in this case here, I'm just going to counter with the Barto. Since I can't use it to revive the Marco anyway. So now it's going to force my opponent to attack with the Sakazuki. He won't be able to play a blocker. So if he's trying to keep uh, four open for Vorsalino, um, he could play. Um, yeah, so he, he could play um, Rosante and keep two open for Shockwave. Yeah, so if he swings in Sakazuki, then um, this could be 
his last attack in. Okay, so he puts two in here. Okay, so he's just going for my life. Um, all right, we're just going to counter out of that one. So we'll use one of the radical beams. Kind of have to in that case. Okay, so here comes the Rosante. Um, so really need to get rid of this Garp. So let's drop the first ace. Let's start by swinging into the guard. Okay, so he lets that one go. And he'll likely defend this one. Then they'll get rid of his blocker. Okay, and we're just gonna pass her in here. Alright, so he still has Pendon open, character on the field. Looks like he's thinking about maybe putting down the 10 drop Kuzan. Then he's gonna have to tap out. He won't be able to swing in the leader. If he swings in Sakazuki, he goes for life. It's gonna be a pretty weak attack. It's gonna make his next attack stronger. Um, but he does attach a Don, so that means no 10 drop this turn. So he's just swinging in here. Um, easy enough, I'll counter out here. Okay, so he's trying to get rid of the Marco. Um, we are going to have to get rid of one of the, the Jozu. So I'm thinking he probably wants to get um, a blocker down here. Right, so we'll use the other 2K. All right, so here's a Borsalino. All right, um, I could try to go for game, might be a little risky. He does have uh, two open, he has a blocker. Um, so I think I'd rather try to play it safe here and hope um, that works out, because I, I do have quite a few event cards. So I'm gonna play the ace, put some pressure on my opponent. And we're gonna swing into his Sakazuki, and I'm sure he's gonna let this go. It's gonna be too hard to defend at this point. Okay, now I'm gonna swing in here. Let's see if he blocks with Borsalino. Okay, so he lets that go. He lets that one go as well. Uh, I'm gonna pass turn. Yeah, I don't wanna tap out with the Marco here. It's, it's too risky, it's not guaranteed. Uh, he can likely counter, but he has quite a few cards in hand. He had two open, so he likely has a Shockwave. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have too many cards in the discard pile, so there's a good chance he has a shockwave here. So now he has to decide if he wants to go for my my board and uh, see if I'll defend that more aggressively. Uh, but he's probably going to go for life here. Okay, so he's going after the um, the Marco. Uh, I'll just use the the other Marco to bring it back, and uh, cause a distraction for my opponent. So now he might focus on going after that. Um, but my really my opponent really has to go for game here. Uh, but he doesn't have too many good options. So um, he's he keeps going for for about nine. So that'd be good if my leader was a five cost leader, but with the math here, uh, I can just use a Radical Beam, and it only takes one card in my hand. Uh, so again, uh, he's going after the Marco, as expected. So I, I am going to counter this, because again, it's kind of a distraction. So my opponent, um, okay, so my opponent keeps um, the blocker up. Uh, so at this point, I, I can go for game. Um, I am going to keep the Marco up just in case, but, so, because I should be able to get through with the rest of these cards here. And at the end, if uh, if I still need the Marco, I'll I'll go for it. Um, so if he does have um, the Shockwave, just swing in and see if he takes that. Okay, so he's gonna have to block that here. So 
does have the shockwave, you have to tap out. And he does get most of the cards out, but now there's no way to use the counter out of that, and that's gonna be game. Okay, so we're up against the Bonkov. Alright, so I'm gonna choose to go second, my mulligan. Um, don't see a stage. That's right. Hopefully we'll find it throughout the game. Okay, so he's gonna start with the blocker law. Um, I'm just gonna see quick. I don't have anything better to do this turn. Plays a blocker. He's gonna rearrange the top five cards for this deck. Okay, he passes over, no swing. Okay, and I don't have um, one of my my vanilla cards, so let's just swing in for for eight. Right, so he just decides to block that. I'm gonna put down um, Barto and pass turn. Okay, so now I get the Atmos. Uh, that would be good to have last turn. But my opponent didn't swing in the last turn, so that's also um, so so okay. So that means I'm not as behind as I could be. Okay, so he plays Vanilla Croc, so he's gonna try to establish a board here. Okay, and now we see King Dit, which is a little bit better. It doesn't get bounced as easily, so I'm just going to swing in for seven. He might counter out of this. Let's see. Oh, he takes that one. Okay. And then I'm going to play King Do. I can threaten his crocodile back if he decides to swing in. Now we see Marco, which is good because I'm going to be at uh, two life um, by the end of the next turn. So I can start establishing my, my blockers. We're going to take this. Uh, no trigger. Okay, Bonkov. Let's see if it's a Luffy. And he could bounce my, my Barto, which isn't as big of a deal. It's only a two drop. But he might decide to just save the cards in his hand. Okay, and now this turn, I think I'm just going to play the ace and swing into the crocodile. And get rid of that. But I just be careful about this Luffy here. I have another ace too, so just in case, uh, I have another one next turn. But I can start putting some pressure onto his board. So I haven't seen my my sage, which is um, gonna make this a little a little tougher. But let's see if we can find it at some point here. Next turn, I also could do um, Squared into Vista. But I do need to start getting some defenses down here. 
Um, I have a Marco and Barto, but if I try to put a blocker down, the Luffy's going to bounce at this point, so um, not going to be too effective in that case. Okay, so he's swinging in for nine. Um, I don't have two two Ks, so this isn't ideal. So I think I'm gonna take this one. Okay, so he decides to play a, a blocker down, so he can try to uh, protect his Abankov and his Luffy. So I think I just have to use a guard point and a 1k. Okay, so now I have another 2k, so that might be helpful for next turn. Uh, I do have to get rid of this, um, this law here. So I think I'm going to use Vista. And I'm going to score the Luffy. And now I have three attacks into the Luffy. It's going to be hard for him to get through all three of them. So he might just let it go. Okay, and now I could try to go for life, or I could try to go for the Ivankov. Um, I don't think the Ivankov's going to get KO'd here with the blocker and a few cards in hand, so I think I'm just better off going for life. And then I think I'm going to play the, um, the Barta down here, so I at least have a blocker. I'll leave two open to bluff one of the events. And then with the other cards in hand, hopefully I can counter. If I can get through this next turn, then I should be able to close it out. So I just have to hope he didn't draw Luffy and he doesn't trash the other two cards. Oh, okay, so he does have Vonkov. So he very well might get a Luffy here. Okay, he doesn't. So that would have been the, the main thing that would have um, bounced the blocker here. But now uh, this is going to be easier to defend because he's mostly tapped out. And I can just counter with a 1k here. I'm just going to block with the Barto. Right, 
So he taps out, plays the buggy. Okay, now he gets the Luffy, but I think it's a little too late. So I know he doesn't have counter in hand for one of the cards. Yeah, so I think I'm just going to swing in for five. He's either going to have to use that last card in his hand to counter or block. Okay, so now I know he has um, no counter power in hand. And now he's going to have to block here. And that should be game. Okay, we're up against the Kinemon. Uh, Kinemon's fallen off a lot, uh, I think, recently in the US meta. Uh, I think Kid's kind of taken over a little bit with the film, uh, which I, I like to do that uh, video soon too, as well, but we'll see. Okay, so we do get the stage here. So we're gonna pass turn. Don't have anything else we can do. Uh, you can play no Kiku, which will slow down a lot of my um, the cards here. But we get a Jet Pistol, that'll help us get rid of that. Uh, let's just swing in for a 7. play stage and pass turn. Uh, Kimon can be a little, little tough, especially if they get their Odins down. Uh, if they get more than one Odin down, it's, um, it's hard for the deck to deal with, because then after that, even if you KO an Odin, you know, Kiku comes down and can tap down most of your characters. So this deck is susceptible to Okiku. Uh, so you have to be aware of that. Okay, so they play a second of Kiku, so it's getting a little bit more tricky to deal with. Um, I do have a Squad and I have a Sea Quake, so I could eventually deal with that maybe later on in the game, but I don't want to get rid of too much life. Wait, yeah, I don't have a board set up. Okay, so my opponent's not attacking with the Okikus yet. They're saving them for when I have something, uh, which I, I will be playing this turn. But for now, let's just swing in, see if they counter out of it. Okay, they take that one. Uh, I'm gonna play King Do and pass turn. So even though they can tap down the King Do, um, it's gonna be hard to attack into the King Do than my leader. So I'm hoping that I can defend it a little bit more easily. And I did get the Jet Pistol. That's gonna be very handy as well. I can get rid of um, one of the Akiku. So if the Akiku uh, attacks into my leader, they t uh, rest down the King Do. If they leave the other Okiku open, then I can just um, Jet Pistol that one and swing into the other one. Okay, so he's going to play a Momo here. And it looks like he he whiffed and he decides to play Killer. Swings for 7. Um, I'm going to take that and I don't need to use the trigger on the Moby Dick. Okay, so uh, I have a Vista here, so that's good. Uh, so I can either get rid of the Momo or the Killer. I definitely don't want him to get more cards. Alright, so I'm going to play the Vista. And we're going to KO the Momo. I do have a Seaquake, so I can Seaquake the Killer. Alright, so yeah, let's do that. And I can swing in for eight. Which is going to be harder for my opponent to counter. You'll need to 
put a few cards in if he wants to counter here, but he decides to take life. I can swing in for the nine. Okay, he takes that too. All right, and uh, I'm just going to leave the three up so that way I can play the event cards here. Um, I'm gonna end up taking the last life, so I'm just gonna pass turn. So now if he swings in with Okiku, he doesn't really have any good targets to tap down. So he attaches a Dawn. So it looks like he's probably just gonna swing into leader for six. He can rest um, the Vista. Um, so I'm just gonna use a 1k counter here and get rid of the Barto because he can usually tap that down. So it's probably not gonna be too effective as a blocker. Okay, he plays a Law and a Capone. So the Law's a good target for the the Jet Pistol. Okay, so he plays another Capone. So it's gonna be a, a lot of blockers to get through here. All right, so he's just gonna swing in for a 6k. Um, probably gonna have to use the 2k counter here. Yeah, just use a 2k counter. Okay, now he's just gonna get rid of the Vista. Okay, so yeah, I do have the, the Jet Pistol. Uh, I can use that to clear out the law, which is one of the, um, the biggest threats right now. Okay, yeah, so let's Jet Pistol the law. Now we can swing into the Okiku and maybe force the blocks. Okay, let's go eight into the Okiku. Okay, so he blocks that one. Now we can swing nine. And he blocks that two. And I just don't have any good targets for the Okiku, so I'm just gonna pass turn. And I'll leave the Don open so I can use my event cards to counter out of this. Okay, so he plays a blocker kid. Okay, now he plays the other Okiku. And he's just gonna swing in for six here. Uh, so I'm gonna have to use my 2k to counter out of that. But now he doesn't have any more attacks this turn. Okay, so that's really good. Uh, I got a Sea Quake. So I can use the Squard with the Sea Quake to get rid of this kid. And that's gonna clear out the um, the board so the, um, the summon cost kit is going to be hard to deal with so it's good to use removal here. So yeah, let's use the squad first, uh, lower the the kid, use sequay, get rid of that. And with green, they don't play a lot of counter cards so uh, there's a good chance there's a lot of dead cards in hand. So let's just go for it. Uh, let's swing an 11. Okay. And we'll go for a 12. Yeah, he couldn't count out of that, so. Um, yeah, that was, was pre pretty risky at the end there, but I uh, just had to go for it. Okay, uh, now we're up against Azoro. Uh, we're gonna mulligan this one. Okay, and we have some blockers here, and we have stage, so that's pretty good. Uh, Zoro tries to go second. So that, that's um, a little different, but I think he maybe wants some extra cards here. Uh, I don't have any turn one play, just gonna pass turn. Okay, so we're gonna play a Sunny. And then from here, it's gonna swing in. Swing in for seven. He takes it, he's gonna play stage, pass turn. So, It'd be nice to get uh, like a Sea Quake or a Vista here. Um, 
most of what Zoro's gonna be playing is gonna be susceptible to removal in the stack. So we just have to see it. Okay, so he does have Luffy. I have to be careful about that. Um, my blockers aren't going to be helpful in that case. So I have to be careful not to tap out in case he does play a Luffy. So I'll swing in for six. Gonna take that. So we can see an ace. And we have to take this one as well. Okay, so we have jet pistol that could be in, uh, that could come in handy for when we have um, Luffy come down. Uh, for right now, uh, I am gonna play the the Marco. So I think for right now, I'm just gonna swing into the Sunny. Okay, let's it go. Put down Marco and turn. And now the Marco can be an attacker later on the game as well. So it's good to get those established when you can. And then you can use them as uh, late game finishers. So with Zoro, he rushed out my life pretty fast because now I'm down to one life and I only have five Dawn. So it'd be nice to have a little extra Dawn here, but uh, in this case, uh, I took a lot of life early on. Just uh, kind of way it goes sometimes. Gonna take this one. Okay, uh, this will be pretty good here. And then we're just going to counter out of that. Um. I think I'm gonna have to use one of the Bartos. Okay, so get Moby Deck, can use that to revive Marco. Um, so I could use Squard. To weaken the Zoro. And I'm going to swing into it. Now I'm going to put down the Barto to bait the Luffy play. I'm going to keep two open for event cards. I only um, have I only have a guard point, so I have to be careful there. But if he plays Luffy now, he's going to mostly be tapped out. And I'll be able to defend that more easily, and I can use the Jet Pistol to get rid of the Luffy, or I could use the Ace and start swinging into it. I could do that as well. And I also have to be careful in case um, he does run Diablo Jambe. Okay, so he's going to play the Vista here. So he's not taking the bait for the Luffy. Uh, he's going to jet pistol my Marco. That's fine. Okay, swings into the Marco. Uh, I'm just going to counter out of that one. That's fine. Okay. Um, so one thing to also to be aware of is the one drops. They're actually more dangerous than um, like the 3Ks. So I do want to get rid of the Nami here. So I think I'm going to play a Vista, get rid of the Nami. Uh, I'm going to swing in with the squad first and see if we can get some cards out of hand. Or he might take it.
Okay, he decides to take it. Swing up for nine. Let's see if he decides to take this one as well. Okay, and we'll leave um, a few a few down open, so my opponent um, is expecting event cards. Okay, so here comes the Luffy. Um, he has a few cards in hand, so he could actually have another Luffy as well, so I have to be careful about this. Okay, so he's going all in. So he's tapped out. So I just need to be able to counter out of this one. We are going to have to put two two Ks into this, which is a little rough. But with him being tapped out, we probably have to go for game here. Uh, I think I'm going to just counter out of this one here, just in case. So instead of going for the Luffy, I think uh, I'm just going to go for game. Because uh, I'm not going to be able to survive next turn. I just don't have enough cards to counter. So let's just um, start chipping away at his, his life here. Okay, so we really do need to make sure every one of these hits land. So let's just try going for nine. Nine. And just gotta kind of hope for the best here. Okay, he didn't have a uh, counter. Um, so yeah, with with Zoro, a lot of times they don't have a lot of counter power. So um, they do have a few two Ks. And they do have possibilities for uh, some radical beams, but there's um, some other cards too that don't have counter. Uh, so they have um, you know the jet pistols, uh, Zoros. They have white beards, um, but they run Gordon. So a lot of times they don't have a lot of counter power. So that's something to be aware of. But with this many cards in hand, uh, this is kind of a good risky play. But it was the only play I really had. Uh, next turn, even if I get rid of the Luffy, um, I just wouldn't be able to block three attacks. Uh, if my opponent saw that. Um, so I, I just decided to go for it at that point. I think that was probably the, um, the best course of action. Okay, and we have another Zoro. So let's see, we, we got the Moby Dick. Let's, uh, let's keep this. Okay, so it starts out the Sunny. We'll get stage down past turn. Okay, so he plays Robin. We don't really have any good characters to play down here, so let's just swing in. Alright, so he's gonna counter out of that. Um, we could jet pistol the Robin. Um, we can see quick the Sunny. Okay, let's just get rid of the Robin. Uh, 
last turn. There's not really too many other bigger characters to hit with the jet pistols though. Robin's a good target here. Okay, he's gonna swing up for six, we're just gonna take that. Okay, don't need to use a trigger. Okay, he's gonna play another Zoro. I'm gonna have to take this one as well. Okay, now he's establishing the board. So we want to try to clear this out as much as possible. Uh, we can swing into the Zoro and maybe see Quake, uh, one of the Sunnies. Right, so let's start by attacking the Zoro here with that. Okay, we can play Marco and pass turn here. Gonna swing in for six. Um, this one's gonna be easier to counter out of, so let's um, let's use the one K here. All right, so he's getting lower on hand size, so we can hopefully try to stabilize here. All right, so he's gonna swing in for another six. Uh, I'm gonna take that one. And let's see if he just swings in with the other Sunny. Okay, so he plays a broke, he gets another body, he can still move the Dudon. So he's filling up his board again. Okay, so he's swinging for 8k. I'm gonna block that one. We can bring it back with Moby Dick. Okay, but he did have to use all of his Don, so that's good. So we can't really counter out of anything here. All right, let's just uh, get rid of one of the Sunnies. All right, that one goes down. Uh, let's see quake. Yeah, let's get rid of the sunny because uh, the one drops can be um, a little rough to keep around. So, all right, and I'm gonna play the bar down in case um, he has some uh, cheap removal like a vista or something. Okay, so he plays a Nami, and he gets a jet pistol, so he can just jet pistol the the bar to now. So he's probably thinking either the Barto or the Marco. If he gets rid of the Marco, I can bring it back, but then he can still swing in. And maybe try to get more cards out of my hand. Okay, so he's just gonna swing for eight. He's not using the jet pistol yet. Uh, so I'm gonna counter out this one with the guard point. So he can still use the jet pistol, only one open for like a radical beam. Alright, so he's just gonna attach Don to Brook. He's gonna swing for six. I can use a 2k to counter out of this. Okay, he just passed his turn here. Um, so I am getting low on cards in hand, so I do want to try to keep as much counter power as possible. Um, I also have the ace. Right, let's uh, get rid of the brook. And let's play the ace. Uh, that's also not going to um, get rid of counter power in my hand. So, um, 
Yeah, let's swing it for nine. He's got to take that. Now he has another threat he has to deal with. And I'll leave the three open to, to bluff. Okay, so now here's the Vista. So he probably had his hand last turn. So he wanted to use a jet pistol if he had the Vista. So he just waited a turn until the Bardo was back in range. Alright, so he swings for eight again. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll block that one, bring it back. Now I have two more Whitebeard cards in hand as well. So if he goes after the Marco, um, I can just bring it back. Alright, so he's swinging for seven. So I can use a 2k count here. Okay, so I can also use the squad for um, bringing back Marco if I need to. Alright, so let's get rid of the Nami. Now I can just swing in to leader with the ace. Hope it's on jet pistol. Okay, so now we can play the Atmos to get a body on the board and we'll play the Squard so we can have bodies. Now we can try to get ourselves in a position to go for game um, because we're running out of time here. I'm running out of cards in hand. So I won't be able to really defend for too many more turns. So I kind of really need to, to put the pressure on. Okay, so use the Jet Pistol to get rid of the Atmos, which, um, yeah, so I knew we had that. Which is why I also need to have the squad down, so that way I have the extra body on the board. Okay, so he's just going to swing in for a 6k. Um, I can just counter out of this. Do okay, so he's like, I have enough to attach to the Vista to attack again. Alright, so I have another Marco. Could possibly buy us a little bit more time. Okay, let's uh, go for a nine. All right, so he takes it. Let's try another nine. Let's see. Um, let's see if he takes this one too. So he still has a, the one open. So he could have a radical beam. Um. Okay, so I don't want to tap out quite yet with my my blocker. So let's try another nine. See if he takes it. Okay, so there's a radical beam. Okay, so that that's good. That's out of hand now. So let's play defense and play the other Marco and pass turn. Okay, so he has to try to get rid of these Marcos. I have to block. I don't have uh, any other cards I could use. I have the one one radical beam. I don't want to use that quite yet. Okay, so he's gonna try to remove the the Marco. Okay, uses Vista. I have to let that one go. But now, if he swings in with the Vista, I have radical beam. Okay, so he's gonna swing in with the Uta. So he's going for ten. Um, yeah, so I'm not gonna be able to counter out of that. That's gonna be game. So he wants to do a rematch. Alright, so we do have stage. Okay, so we get the jet pistol, play stage, and I'll just pass. Alright, plays Robin. Um, let's let's just swing in first. Okay, so he counters out of that one. Uh, now let's just jet pistol the Robin. Oh, another jet pistol. <laughs> also have the Vista, can get rid of the Nami. Swinging for a six, we're gonna take that one.
Okay, so Maki now, he can pump up Nami. Let's wait for six. Gonna take that too. Don't need to use the trigger. And Zora, so another uh, another attack. So he's being very aggressive here. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna counter that one because uh, uh, I'm taking a lot of hits here. So I don't wanna get too low too fast. I don't have too much Don to work with. Um, yeah, let's see if we can go for nine with the Zoro. That should get rid of it. We can Vista the Nami. So he doesn't have an attacker. So he could play another Machina if I if I got rid of that. So then I'd be in the same position where the Nami would just swing in again for a six. So I wanted to get rid of um, another one drop. So it doesn't have Rush. So uh, he, he can't just uh, play another Machina to replace this one. Okay, so swings for a six. Uh, I'm going to have to take that. Get six open. Vista gets rid of my Vista. Okay, so he has three open. Uh, he could have like a radical beam. Uh, but I got my own. Uh, eight open. I don't want to tap out, so let's let's just start swinging first. See if he takes it. Swing for eight. All right, so takes the life. Play a Marco. And. Yeah, I don't want to take too many more attacks. So let's see if I can just Vista his Vista. So I don't have to block one attack now. So I, I have a Radical Beam. I also have Marco. All right, so he plays New Gate. Now I can counter this with, with the 2K. Okay, so another Vista. All right, so my Vista is not going to be too effective this turn. So I can play a Squard. To lower the new gate, and I can jet pistol it. Okay, now I can swing in for eight, and I'll leave the three dawn open for events. Okay, so now I know he has a Radical Beam. Okay, so he swings for six. I'm, I'm gonna block that because I wanna save the Vista. Okay, so he uses a jet pistol to get rid of the squad. Okay, see so another Marco. Right, now we can swing in for five. He's gonna have to use a 2k. Um, yeah, let's swing in first. Right, now we can play the Vista, get rid of the Nami, so he can't use the Machino effect on it. I'll play another Marco so that way. I can have another blocker up. Again, keep the three open for the events. Another new gate. Okay. Um Swing, swing for seven. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to use a guard point because uh, it, it's tougher to keep done open. Okay, so we have another ace.
Okay, if we can survive this turn, we should be able to close out next turn. So I, I do have the two blockers up. All right, so let's start with swinging nine. So he needs to have two cards here. Okay, so he's going to take that one. I can play an ace as a distraction. Or I can play another Marco, because it keeps you out of removal. Yeah, let's play the Marco. Um, so that way we can keep the blockers up, and then that way if he um, has something like a Luffy or a Dabo Jambe, I can still use my event cards and hope to uh, try to get out of that. Okay, so he gets rid of the Bista. Now I can block. And I can use one of the aces because I'm probably not going to need <laughs> another turn. So I can bring back the Marco. So he's going to swing into it. I'm um, just going to have to let it go. Yeah, I don't have too many great options here. I have to use the guard point. Now, if he has something like Rush, I should be able to counter out a bit. Okay, so he decides to just play Nuta here. He gets an Otama. Right, so he doesn't have any blockers. He has two open. Uh, I know he has a Radical Beam. Uh, I kind of just have to go for it here. So let's go seven. Uh, seven. Okay, so he Radical Beams that. Um... Yeah, so pretty much every hit from here has to land, so. Uh, yeah, just have to go seven. Uh, nine. And just have to play the ace and hope he doesn't have enough to counter out of it. Okay, and yeah, that that's game. So that's my take on Red Newgate for set two. Uh, we'll see how it changes going to set three. But for right now, um, I, I think this is a really fun deck to play. Um, it's a little inconsistent and you have to be very careful with how you um, use your counters. Um, but if you can get rolling, it's uh, it's definitely a strong deck. Uh, if you want to see like an alternate take as well, um, this is also a version of the deck. Um, I've been playing it. and um, e either one works. I think they're they're both fun, but um, the jet pistols I think are um, They're good to get you out of pinches so you can uh, get rid of some of the bigger targets that you normally can't with um, this version but this version also has um, You know easier time with removal. You don't have to commit as many Don um, To get rid of something so you can um, you know, use your sea quake so you get rid of a lot of the, the cheaper attackers You can use a sea quake with a squad um, in order to get rid of some of the bigger targets or you can even use a uh, sea quake with the ace. So the more sea quakes you have, um, the more likely you're able to see it in tandem with the ace. So if you want to cut back on one of the aces, uh, three is totally fine as well. So three, three is also a good number. Uh, but a lot of times you want to see the ace um, at some point, um, usually later on in the game. So three is probably good as well. And with the squad, you know, having it at three of, um, you know, it's good to see it when um when you need it and um you know like i said before you can also use it to pitch for marco if um if you don't really have a good opportunity for it but that is going to be it for this video thanks for watching be sure to bring along all of your hopes and dreams and i'll see you in the next video